Hi guys, so uh, today we're gonna do something kind of out of the ordinary. I wasn't expecting to do this video, but um, after the power shortages of last week, we had a family member have a, a dental emergency this week. So I've had a couple of um, dental visit kind of waiting room experiences. And I thought that instead uh, we would spend some of the time doing a little plein air painting trip. So as you can see, I've brought all of my usual supplies and I also bought this little tiny vial of the Schmincke Aqua Bronze. I also bought my uh, TN that I generally use to take. It's got like some pallets already in there, but I, I made this one and it has a back pocket and my, uh, my regular pallets sort of fit in the back. So I thought I'd bring that and then I just brought some water in an old vitamin jar. Um, because I really wanted to paint with my regular brush so you can see there was the parking lot then I've gone on a little drive around to see if I could find a nice building I was liking the look of this um, doorway but I couldn't find a car park so then I found this building and it's actually the local YMCA so it's this gorgeous old stone building and um, yeah, I thought I, I had a place that I could pull up and actually park. So I could pull up sort of around the corner, but I couldn't park there for a long time. So I, um, you know, put my coins in and then I went on a little walk. I took a few videos of it and then I hopped back in my car to take the initial sketch. And so I couldn't even find a coin for the car park. So I finally found a quarter and then I put that in. It gave me 15 minutes. I wasn't sure if that would be enough. So um, I was actually able to do the sketch in about 10 minutes. So it was actually really nice to sketch on location. I, I've i seen, I've watched like Liz Steele do it and you know, people walking around uh, Europe doing it on like vlogs or YouTube videos. And I've just, I've been amazed and I really wanted to do it but I you know I just wasn't sure if I could so I am um, I'm actually I think I'm actually back at the dentist at this point so I just did the initial sketch there and then I just went back to the dentist and I'm sitting in the car uh, having a paint and so this is I'm home again so that's what I got done in the car before we got home and now I'm just going to kind of bring everything out uh, at home on my desk and we're going to finish it off together. So it's actually quite uh, an interesting experience. Uh, one thing I would caution on is just safety. So make sure that you are somewhere that you feel comfortable, you feel like it's a safe area, there are people around or you have you know, a friend with you or someone um, that you trust and that you don't get too carried away in your work that you know you don't notice who's around you so that's just a word of caution I mean obviously it's common sense but I just wanted um, to put that out there I don't want you like going somewhere and it's dangerous or it's dark or anything like that um, and you know especially because you are painting or you're doing something like that it does bring attention to you so um, yeah so anyway it was really fun and um, it was really nice so I, I I wasn't actually sure how I would go sketching from real life so I actually think I did a bit better than I expected and it was a little bit quicker than I expected as well so if you only have a few minutes you actually can accomplish quite a lot and then you can take that home and finish it off um, the other thing is if you are interested in this style Liz Steele does have some really nice um, she does like tours and uh, also online courses so I'll leave a link to her um, just her name and stuff below and let's see yeah so what I'm doing here is I am mixing up the stone colors so so pretty much since I started collecting Daniel Smith I've been looking for how to create these stone colors I really really love this old stone and one thing that I've done here is take a bit of artistic license. So I didn't do the red brick. I just mainly did the whole building, the stone colors. And so I have settled on, I, I tried a bunch of different ones like Gothite, um, fired yellow ochre or fired red ochre or something like that. 
um, but I've just settled on my French ochre and the cobalt blue and that's what I am mixing up mainly so every time I add a different stone though to try and make it look more natural I will mix in a little bit of one or the other color and then I will also drop in a little bit of hematite so you can see me just do that there and sometimes I will like pull that along and blend it out a little bit and sometimes I'll just let it sit and it kind of looks like that aged stone so I'll talk a little bit more and I'll show you a bit more of that up close later in the video and so I, I think I'll just let you watch some of this painting then I'll talk a little bit more about it at the end and what paper I'm using and things like that so the other thing is you can see probably from my palette what I'm mixing in so I'm mixing in bits of Sedona if I want it a little bit darker and bits of indigo sometimes uh, so basically blues and browns is what I'm mixing to create these greys and then a lot of like it's really watered down so a lot of water into the mixture and then I really like the hematite because it just gives this really soft brown gray so it's not necessarily black but um, it can't you know it is really like a charcoal gray sort of and you can mix it to be a really soft sort of smoky color as well so um, you know sorry water it down so I really enjoy uh, doing that
so I have watched quite a few I'll actually post another link to another video that's one of my favorites on creating a center of interest in watercolor I really enjoyed watching that and um, you know I, I mean this is like probably my second or third attempt at actually painting architecture and um, it's like my first actual plein air sort of experience and half of it I'm doing at home so but what I'm doing here is just creating some of my favorite color mixes with the pinks and browns and the sort of um, Jean Bruyne and the Opera Rose and I'm and the Sedona and I'm creating uh, just a sky I'm just kind of making it my own so obviously the day was a sunny blue sky but I'm just creating a different color here and also I've always wanted to paint one of those um, copper domes that when the copper goes green and oxidizes and so I just did that on this building as well So I have uh, done what I generally do and I kind of do a bit until I get stuck and then I give myself a little break and it might only be a few minutes but you can see here that I'm sort of stuck and so I get out the paper and I'm just showing you here what I'm using. So this is the Milford, uh, it's the St. Cuthbert's Mill Milford paper. So it's made by the same people that make the Saunders Waterford, which I really love, but it's been hard to get. It's quite expensive. And so I wanted to try out this uh, pad. So this has, I, I got this off Jackson's. It's around $22, I think for maybe 20 sheets. I'm, I'm not sure there, but you just put a palette knife or like a knife or something that you have in the back there that they leave a little hole and then you can really easily get the papers off so it doesn't give you the nice um, you know the nice edge but you do get a really nice cotton sheet of paper uh, to work with and you know you can start um, kind of using that more um, in your artwork anyway I just wanted to have this and kind of try it I've been using the Walmart one for so long um, you know for the last five years or so and I just wanted to have something else that I can just do um, th try things on and sort of practice so I really enjoyed this paper it is a little bit th uh, thinner than the it's they both say 300 GSM but this one I'll show you when I kind of um, flick the paper. You can see it, this one is thinner. So I'm not sure they compress this more. I don't know if it's the way they're carbonating the other paper or um, however they're finishing it that it's um, not compressed and it's still going hard. So I'm not really sure there, but it was enjoyable to work on. And I think it's also a little bit easier to work on than the Saunders Waterford. So it's a bit easier on your brushes uh, for practicing and things like that. I have this linked in my favorites. So there's a link below the video that says my favorite products or something like that. And it will be linked in that list. And then you can see here, I wasn't sure what to do with the bottom because I'd kind of off centered the whole thing. So that was one thing that I did learn just to be more careful that even the sky is part of the, um, you know, painting. And so to center uh, the building correctly anyway. 
so I remembered that there were um, the trees at the bottom I wasn't even going to paint them in I just kind of had left the bottom of the building like that and then um, I realized that I could paint the trees in so so I'm just showing you you can see there the paper it's quite easy to flick whereas this one is a little bit harder to flick but they're both saying they're the same weight so if you have any uh, ideas about that you can let us know in the comments and then I will just show you here so um, a close-up of how the hematite why I like it and why I like putting it in now you can use um, like a lunar black or something like that which will do something similar but I think the lunar black is a little bit more granulating so I like this one because it's a bit softer uh, and it it has uh, when you um, when you swatch it out on its own there is like a subtle under sort of it separates into this kind of charcoal gray almost black but then also like a soft brown around it and so it I just think it works perfectly for the stone so anyway I thought this would be a nice kind of practice because at some point I would like to try and get into New York and do some uh, plein air painting with you in there as well um, we are quite close but um, just it's been obviously really hard to get in there this year and then the storm that came through last week trees that were damaged are still falling on power lines and like it's been still quite a mess so so anyway yeah, I thought that it would be good to have a video to you know for the beginning of the week rather than sort of not have anything to show and so I thought this would be a good way to do it and to get some practice and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I thought we'd just go on a little quick um, browse through the shops in the area as well so um, there's a bit of footage of that here but I hope you guys are okay and doing well and I will see you hopefully in a day or two with the first part of the um, art journal uh, okay bye